Um, you're my secret daddy. Ooh. The program works. Just never, never get married. Don't have kids. Oh, awful. What you're doing on the radio is is, is great, man. I, I I I really look up to you. I love you, man. Thank you. You're like a godfather to me. Every word you say, I I just do it. And oh man, great son of Sam. Look at here, look at here, Tom. Let me tell you. You are the truth, the way, and the light. You hear me? Your show is what all men need. I mean, we we need to get get put up on game, and, and you, you do a great job with that. Understand that not everybody has to get married. Everyone out there, you don't have to get married. It is not something that has to Nobody happen. has to get married. At all. Nobody. Sometimes it's just lonely. Darling, don't you have friends? Well, I'm, I'm talking more about kind of bedroom affairs, but I definitely have friends. I have Couldn't a lot you of just have a life. bullpen of, uh, of friends with benefits? No, I don't have any of those. <laughs> you got to get on the stick here, Tony. I think I'm a little bit shy to do that. I don't even know how I go about kind of starting Literally and figuratively, like you got to get on the stick. Okay, well, just send me the map of where the stick is. I'll jump right on it. Darling, I'll uh, give you a Thomas guy. You know, before I listened to you, I was in a relationship came home one day from work just decided that uh, I wanted to beat her to the punch and when she came home from work all of my things were out of the apartment and she was dropped the things you've been saying they sunken in right now and I get it now in the beginning of the summer I barely started listening to you and you know what you like you're the you're the new bible the new testament if anything everything you say is just perfect like there's no there's nothing wrong with what you're saying tell me this rick uh in listening to everything i have to say uh tell the losers out there what your net worth is well if i liquidated everything today it would be somewhere between 11 to 13 million dollars wow now uh, tell me rick uh, how much of this is due to the uh, female companionship you've had let's see um zero <laughs> I love your show, and for all those women that hate you, screw them. <laughs> yeah, screw Why? Well, I'm, I'm working on that. I love the threats of suicide. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are they actually doing? They never do it. You serious? Well, they, they try it on you, and they see what if it'll work. <laughs> all right. Okay. Oh, yeah. man, they're well, crying. I'm telling you, Lewis, when you experience your first experience with a woman, Openly weeping. <laughs> You're gonna love it. All right, I'll trust you on that. Oh, I would say that's a goal in life. <laughs> All right. All I'm saying is, is that you not be so harsh on women and, and just bash them like you do. I love women. Everyone should own one. Own? What do you mean own? Did you mean own? Okay, fine, then. You add, that's actually like a Bible term, because if you mean own, then there that's you go. Marriage. Just call me Pastor Tom. Oh, my God. Okay, I got to go, Tom, because you, I didn't got a headache already. You driving me up the wall. From a place. We're not allowed to reveal. It's Flash Friday. I want more money. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800. Eight six six. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And uh, it's the final Flash Friday of the season. The final Flash Friday of 2008. This is it. 
So this is the time that you need to be uh, turning your headlights on, guys. Because after this edition of the program, after we head off into Labor Day weekend, after uh, traditional summer for most of you morons is winding down, after all of that, that's it. There'll be no more Flash Friday this season. So headlights on, guys and ladies. Uh, if you see a guy with the headlights on showing his loyalty to the Tom Likens show, expose your knockers to him, please. Let's see your cans, girl. Come on. Step it up. Do it. We've been getting uh, some responses here uh, to our request. Uh, we want to do a big, in case you're just tuning in, and maybe you are because on the West Coast, everybody's just getting out of work. But uh, we're getting a nice response uh, so far. Uh, we have asked uh, people to help us put on a uh, a taco truck festival in Los Angeles to show support for the little guy who's getting uh, kicked around by the L.A. County Board of Supervisors, uh, the drivers of taco trucks. Uh, Gloria Molina, a Mexican-American, crafted legislation that would require taco trucks to move every hour. Every hour they have to move to another location. And um, that law has been uh, put off for the time being because the judge says it's too vague. So now Gloria Molina is going to make another run at making it even more specific. I want to show support for the little guy, and these are little guys that I do patronize, taco trucks. And I think just about anybody who lives in Los Angeles, East L.A., anybody in Southern California, just about has eaten off a taco truck. These guys are entrepreneurs. They work for their money. They work hard, and they produce a good product for the most part, and everybody loves them. Everybody has their favorite taco truck. And I want to show my support for the taco truck drivers by having an event for them where we're going to, uh, we're going to wrangle about 50, 75, 100, as many taco trucks as we can get together on a flat space. And then we're going to invite our listeners to come down and buy and taste and test their product. And my goal is to get thousands of people down there to see it. But first, we need a venue. We need an outdoor venue, a big flat area that can accommodate a bunch of taco trucks. You may have a big parking lot or you may have some big flat space somewhere. Maybe you've got a piece of land that you haven't built on yet or something like that. That's all we need. It's all we need. So um, call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM if you've got a space for us. 1-800-5800-866 and Dean J. Demilio will take your information or... Uh, if you can't get through on the phone, just drop us an email. Send it right from your cell phone. Send it to tom at blowmeuptom.com. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. And uh, we will take your information. And we will get back to you. And we're gonna, By the way, even if we have one offer, and we do have a couple of offers, even if we have one offer, we need more because we have to check all these spaces to see which ones are the most viable. A listener in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat, writes in. And he says, if you need a big, flat, open space in L.A., isn't Denise Richards' forehead or chest available? <laughs> it's the cost of parking. Yes, the cost of parking. That's why we won't be using that. Believable. Charlie Sheen will enjoy that particularly. Absolutely. All right, wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show on this final Flash Friday of the season. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. Much of our email today is about John McCain's pick of a chick as his vice presidential running mate, a woman named Sarah Palin, who is the first-term governor of, hold on to your hat, Alaska. You know, he's got Alaska locked up now. Not only needs the other 49. Unbelievable. A lot of mail about that. Pro and con, by the way. Uh, you're welcome to comment on that or anything we discussed on the air this week. All you have to do is call us here at one 800 tom one eight hundred five eight hundred eight 
six six. This is Gilbert on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hola, Tomas. Hola, Gilbert. What's up, baby? Not much. How are you? Uh, I'm loving you every minute, brother. You know what? I really appreciate the support you give us. I, I also own a taco truck myself. Where do you uh, Where do you operate? I, I operate on weekends off of Valley Boulevard in Ciudad La Puente. And what's your specialty? What do you What do you have that's really great? Oh, we're known for our fish tacos, brother. Really? Uh, our company name is Senor Baja. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, we've been, we've been in business for over 30 years. 30 years? Yeah, my parents started the business with the, the name El Taconazo, and now uh, our total is about 30 locations, Taconazo and Senor Baja together. Fantastic. So so your parents built this up from a little business. Oh, yeah. My parents started the business with the taco truck. Wow. And and it's horrible that there's like Gloria Molina... A Mexican American is so racist and so biased when it comes to hardworking people that just want to make an honest living. I, and uh, what do you think? I, I have to ask you because, indeed, Gloria Molina is a Mexican American. What would, what possible uh, inspiration would she have uh, to, to to clamp down on the little guy, most of whom are Mexican Americans? I I know the reason why she's doing it. What? This is obviously my this is my inside source. Um, we're not going to reveal any names. Uh, big companies like King Taco, are, or a lot of other businesses that are big, are funding money to to the supervisors in order for them to push these taco trucks off the streets because it's hurting their business. You know what? If the uh, if these businesses, and I'm not naming any in particular, if they made a better product. At a better price, taco trucks wouldn't be a problem. Exactly. That's, that's there's the there's a reason there are so many taco trucks, and that's because they're so good and because people love them so much. And and by the way, uh, everybody has their favorite, don't they, Gilbert? Everybody has their favorite truck. Hey, I have my favorite trucks, and they're not even mine. <laughs> I just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Mine. You talk to people about taco trucks in L.A., they're very passionate about it, and they have their truck, the one they like. They may go to other trucks, but there's that one that they think makes the best carne asada, the one that makes the best burrito. I mean, they, 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 they just have a very strong opinion about that. Oh, yeah. People get very passionate with uh, because they, they feel a certain kind of bond with their community. So lunch, lunch trucks are really community little businesses, so people get attached to a little community taco truck and they could rab and rate about them well uh i hope uh i hope we can find this big flat area to put all these trucks because i would really love to have just a big showing of trucks hey I, then, i'm also i'm sorry so no, no. i'm also i'm also a part of the organization taco truck vendors uh -huh. and there's about a good 500 to a thousand members in our organization we're the, we're the organization that's fighting Gloria Molina with Well, attorneys. we've been in touch. I think it's your attorney we've been in touch with. Huh? And and uh, if if that is him, uh, he is uh, totally in favor of our idea and wants to help us any way he can. Uh, uh, just, just tell me this. Does his name start with, uh, uh, last name starts with a W? Let me take a look because I have it here. Maybe Gary is uh, nearby and can uh, tell me the. Gary's looking also. Let me see here. I've got his name here. Let me see. Hang in there. Because <laughs> we got a lot of notes here. A lot of notes on this. We've been working on this for a while. Awesome. Hey, hey, wait, is that it there? No. Yes. Thank you for waiting. Your patience is appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Call is important to us. Oh. Now, I'll have to get back to you on that, because otherwise we could take up the whole day. But, uh, yes, I I'm sure we're talking about the same person. There can't be two organizations like this. Exactly. 
and uh, we're but I'm, we are totally in support of the taco trucks. Certainly, we want these guys to obey the law and clean up their area and what have you. That obviously we uh, yeah. we want that, and and most responsible truck owners do that. Exactly. I mean, people invest. I mean, I invest in like hundred grand on my truck. People invest serious money into their rigs, and and to be closed down, it's horrible. Uh, the attorney's name is Phil Greenwald. Mr. Philip Greenwald, yes, sir. That's him. Didn't start with a W, though. No, uh, uh, Green. Oh, that last name. I think it's Greenwald. That's right. There Mr. we Phil go. Greenwald. Yes. So we're talking about the same guy. Great guy. Yeah, we've been in touch with him, and uh, he is uh, he is definitely in favor of what we want to do, and uh, so hopefully uh, together we can create an amazing event because. Uh, and you know this because your family's been in this for a couple of generations. I mean, this is part of the fabric of Los Angeles. This is not uh, this is not just a business. It's part of the culture here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, L.A. was founded on taco trucks. King, this is what blows me away, Tom. King Taco started with the taco truck. Well, and that's you see, that's what I I find strange is of what I've read. Uh, and I didn't read any specific uh, chains named in the stories I've read. But mm -hmm. a number of the complainers started as taco trucks. And then they had to, then they decided, well, we're going to rent space. We're going to, you know, become like a traditional bricks and mortar business. Mm -hmm. But of course, then they found out that, uh, you know, they've got rent to pay and they've got to maintain parking areas and they've got all kinds of laws and rules and regulations they have to follow. It costs a lot more to be in a fixed location. Than to be exactly. in a taco truck. So rather than uh, ramping it up and uh, producing a better product for a lower price and uh, finding ways to cut their costs, they've decided to uh, find a way to put their competitors out of business. And I'm just amazed at the city of Los Angeles, at the county of Los Angeles, that, that there are people uh, who think they can get away with that. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, we're not going to let. Well, I'll tell you what. We're not going to let it stand. We're not going to let it pass. I mean. And I am firmly in the court of the taco trucks. Awesome. I love it. I love it. I'm there. I'm there for you, too, brother. If you ever, whatever you need, I'm there for you guys, too. Thank you so much. I know so you're much. there for us, too. Gilbert, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Tom. Like us. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Man, if it wasn't for you, last Friday, I would have never seen the perfect set of cans I just saw. Really? Tell us where you saw them. I was just getting out of football practice and I was driving by. I saw some girls coming out of the softball field. I flipped my headlights and bam, can paradise right there. <laughs> were they hot? Oh, they were great, Tom. I bet they were like 38 Ds. I just wanted to grab my mitts and go play some catch. <laughs> it's Flash Friday on the Tom Likey Show. The Tom Likey Show. Final Flash Friday. Of the season. 1 800 5 800 Tom. That is our telephone number. These phones are just going crazy. Kevin of the Tom Liggett Show. Hello. What's up, brother Tom? Not much, Kevin. How are you? Oh, brother, man. I'm just sitting back here in the backyard sipping on uh, some Jack Daniels right here. For all the folks stuck in traffic here, I want to let you listen to the ice shaking, the ice cold Jack Daniels there. Can I just call you old? Can I call you old number seven? Old number seven, man. If I if I would be, I'm your oldest son here. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your oldest son, brother. How you doing, man? You know, I had to come give my last little shout out to you for the end of summer. Uh, you, Dino, and uh, Dean, and uh, all the rest of the fellas down there. I just had to give my last little shout out, and I uh, got me a nice little buzz going on right now, brother. Oh, right I now, love that. That's Look, the way to I tune in. We're going right uh, into the Labor Day hey, weekend here. That's the Labor way to Day do it. Weekend. Uh, traffic's ought to be picking up here in Southern California freeways out there. Uh, people out there trying to go to Vegas or out to the lake. Usually I'll be running out to the lake with, with some buddies, but I'm going to take it kind of cool this week. Uh, had a pretty cool uh, week this week. Uh, brother went up to uh, Pismo Beach with uh, Wiz right past your house, bro. When I went past that, sure did thought about you, Tom. Sure did, bro. <laughs> but you know what? I, I caught the train up there. You ever caught the Amtrak? 
You know what? I've been talking about doing that, and I've been looking into it, and I've been going over. In fact, I've been to a couple of Amtrak stations, one in Lompoc, one in Santa Lompoc. Barbara. Or that yeah. one probably be close to you is probably Galito. You want you think that one might be the closest one because you I think you take that uh that one sixty six or that one fifty that windy road up uh up in the hills. I know exactly when I used to take that road, bro, was nothing out there. Wasn't nothing out there though. But uh yeah, I took a nice little train ride up to uh Pismo Beach, uh uh got me a nice little place. See this way your boys do it. And I want you girls all out there that's out there, this is where Tom boys do it. We got me a nice little place uh, right off the cliff, man. Just sat with my window open all night, listen to the sea breeze, and uh, just went in town bar hopping. Uh, uh, went to some place called Harry's. I think that was the name of it, Harry's in Pismo. By two o'clock in the afternoon, Tom, man, we didn't leave out that place stumbling about to nine o'clock at night, just boozing it up all. And how, day how was how was the talent out there, Kevin? Oh, well, you know, it's kind of like I give it a, uh, well, because it was kind of cool. I heard it was about like a hundred and something degrees, uh, uh, in, uh, here in LA, but, um, but it was a nice, it was a nice, um, um, probably about like a nice 75 degrees there, man. I'm telling you, bro, you need to, we needed to have the uh, jackets on it in, in the, Daytime, daytime, but it kind of heated up mid afternoons there, mid afternoon. No, no, I was asking, I was asking about not not the weather, the talent, how the chicks, talent how there, the chicks. Man, well, that's why I see the chicks. I probably kept on the beach. I probably, I say, I gave it a LA eight, LA eight. LA eight. That's pretty good. Yeah. Pismo Beach. What yeah. a place to spend an afternoon. You yeah. know, they they still had some motor vehicles on the beach there, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, pretty much. You know, and then, you know, if you're a free spirit guy like like I am, man, I just see somebody driving down the street and just ask them for a ride. It's nothing but a couple blocks. You know, it gives a little small time feel and stuff. And if you uh, cool people can spot out cool people, you know, and and, and plus I, I went too many black guys in town there too. So. <laughs> 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 you know, they wonder, they should have black guy got where he was going there. So, but I had a good time there, man. So I'm just sitting back here looking up at the sky, man, and just enjoying my Southern California day. Uh, I'm telling you, life couldn't be no more perfect, you know. Sounds good to me, Kevin. It yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah. And stuff there, so you know. I just want to give uh, my last little shout out to you, Tom. And then on the taco truck issue, let me tell you something. There's no such thing without L.A. without taco trucks, L.A. without Mexicans. You know, if you don't like taco trucks or don't like Mexicans, you need to hit the road. It's the wrong city for you. Oh, it's the wrong city for you, brother. You know, I want to tell you all, my Mexican brothers. You know, Kev loves you, and, uh, and everybody else because you know I'm uh, no color lines here. No color lines, brother. And, you know, that's one, one thing. If anybody knows anything about Tom Likas, Tom Likas sees no color lines there. Because I've been, I've been listening to you for years, though, bro. Listen to you for years, though. You know, because, you know, you, you have gave me a lot of things. Man, you invited me out to the Playboy Mansion. Matter of fact, because of you, I'm drinking Knob, uh, drinking Knob Creek, you know, because when I, I came up to the it. mansion, yeah. went up to the mansion and, um, and seen that all that Knob Creek, and ever since then, I've been a Knob Creek uh, a drinker. And then plus two, I'm one. I'm one of your brothers uh, you, that you send down to Jamaica. You send me down to Jamaica when you give away those uh, man giveaways. I, run, I went down to Jamaica to uh, heathenism and uh, ran around butt naked. You know? Love that. <laughs> you are a hard. You are a hardcore listener. <laughs> yeah, I'm a hardcore. I'm an OG. OG there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my, my, my daughter wants to say, say, hello, Tom. Hello, Tom. Hello. What's your name? Trishel. Oh, are, are you a radio listener? Are you listening to our show? Yes. Yeah? How old are you? Nine. Nine years old? So yes. you going back to school next week? Yeah. Yeah? What, what grade are you in? Four. Fourth grade. Are you excited? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, my daddy loves your show. Wow. Do you listen with him? Yes. I love that. Well, you can call my show anytime. Okay. Okay. Good to talk to you. Okay. Okay. Blow me up. I'll blow you up, baby. Here you go. <laughs> Start them young. I love that. 
Here is Manny on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. All right, great. I uh, just wanted to get your feedback on um, the VP pick that McCain picked today. Speaking of women. Well, um... Uh... Let's let's take out of the equation how I feel about John McCain. Okay, let's just let's just look at it uh, strategically for a second. Yeah, I don't think this is what John McCain needed. I, I think John McCain needed somebody to give him some economic credentials. Mm. Um, whether it's Mitt Romney or whoever, he needed somebody who could strengthen his. Um, is uh, really somebody who knows more about business than he does. He's. I mean. First of all, how stupid can you be to admit economics is not my strong suit? <laughs> I know. So Crazy. then what do you do? You get the first-term governor of Alaska? Yeah, that's going to help you a lot. Yeah, and like his, his biggest thing against Barack was his experience. And then he goes and picks someone with you know less experience than Barack. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? You know, because McCain is the oldest candidate ever. Yeah. Okay. Can you imagine if he keels over and your your president is Sarah Palin, the governor of Alaska, the first term governor of Alaska? Yeah, I just I just think he just uh just screwed everything on his end. But. I I really do, and I do believe they wanted to find a woman because Barack Obama is so popular and boy last night on T V he looked good. And uh they want to get somebody with absolutely no track record so that Democrats couldn't criticize her for what she's done in the past. Yeah, a lot a lot of it I think too is that you know, McCain's trying to get all those Hillary voters and he thinks by getting a woman, you know, he's gonna be able to get all the Hillary voters now that are you know against Obama. But you know, I well, look at all the look at all the women Democrats who didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. That, just because you're a woman doesn't mean you support uh, a woman. Yeah. I mean, well, can you imagine yeah. a Hillary Clinton supporter voting for somebody who's anti-abortion? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just these people that they're hating on Obama for no reason, you know. But you know, he goes and picks this candidate, which she just pretty much lost the election now doing that. I mean, just within the next couple of weeks, you're going to see it's just going to get worse and worse for McCain. And just, well, here's what else is going to get worse, because uh, let me tell you something. I've I've been uh, familiar with John McCain going back to when I lived in Arizona back in the early 80s. And let me tell you something. This guy's got a very short fuse. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who's advising Barack Obama, but calling out John McCain... And uh, essentially tempting him to make stupid comments is the best thing. You wave a red flag in front of that bull, and he's going to do something stupid. Yeah. And I think the more Barack Obama calls him out, the more likely it is he's eventually just going to he's going to burst. Yeah, exactly. He'll spontaneously combust. Yeah. Like yesterday, I mean, finally Barack Obama gets on more of the offensive. You know, usually he's not bringing up McCain when he's talking in his speeches and things like that. But yesterday, I mean, he just went all out on him. And then that makes him look really good. You know, I'm looking at all the the uh, feedback and everything, and everyone's giving them, like, really good feedback and telling him he did a great job and all that. And I, mean, I don't think, I don't know how the Republicans are going to come back next week and make it look, you know, anywhere near close to what, you know, Barack Obama did this week. Yeah. I mean, uh, here's your new here's your new commercial for Barack Obama. It's 3 a.m. John McCain just died, and the phone rings at the White House, and the president is some chick from Alaska. I know she has like what 68, 6900 people in her on who she's governing right now, or something like that. I mean, she well, no, like, no, she's the no. governor of Alaska. She, you're thinking when she was the the mayor of Wasilla, Alaska, previously. Oh, uh, okay. But yeah, come on, what I mean, kind of experience is that? You gotta well, be I just kidding. Say that. And um, could you uh, take me out with a bong hit? I certainly can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's the final Flash Friday of the season. Wide open telephones here. And by the way, if you've got a flat space for us to put a bunch of taco trucks. We need to hear from you. Like it. Like 1 800 5800 Town. Like 1 800 5800 866. I've been listening to you since I was four years old. You're like a third parent to me. It's the Tom Like It Show. The Tom Like It Show. At one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, 
That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. The final Flash Friday of the season. Wide open telephones at 1-800-5800-TOM. On this Flash Friday, it's Mike. Hello. Uh, how you doing, Tom? Doing okay, Mike. Yeah, first time, long time. Cool. Yeah, I was going down at La Cienega. You know, the mobile get ready to make a ride on Beverly. Had my headlights on, and she showed me her headlights, and I just started blowing my horn. I okay. love that. How did she look? <laughs> hot. Blonde in her nice little white Honda Civic. I was like, oh, hot. I love it. How old was yeah. she? How old was she? I say like about maybe in her early twenties. Hot, just you know, showed me the headlights. She know what time it was. As soon as I was getting ready to turn, and she saw my lights on my uh, little truck. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I had a call. I had a call. I was like, oh, I got to get through today. It's the last day. I was like, oh, I got to get through. Now, Mike, if you were listening to KLOS, would you be seeing bare breasts out there next to the Beverly Center? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. I wouldn't see it. And oh, if you did see bare breasts of a KLOS listener, would you want to see them? Yeah. <laughs> Just thought I would check. <laughs> yeah, I can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with headlights. You're absolutely right, Mike. Well, thank you so much for that. I appreciate the call. Let's go to Jeff on the Tom Like Show Flash Friday. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. I just got a question for you. Uh, last night on the, the DNC, Obama promised that he's going to go ahead and uh, um, bring the jobs back to the United States. I just want to know what your take is on that and if you think it's going to actually happen. Well, I think if you start penalizing companies who outsource by not giving them any subsidies of any kind and you start uh, uh, redirecting subsidies to companies that create jobs, it's going to have an impact. Right. I, I mean, it, it just sounds like he's... He's doing a lot of talking. I'm just wondering if he's going to be able to back it up with anything substantial. Well, anybody who runs for president, all he's telling you is what he wants to do. And obviously, he has to do it in concert with Congress. And if Congress disagrees, if Congress uh, cuts him off at the knees, there's not much he can do. But that's yeah. every candidate. Every candidate. Right. And, and another thing, uh, what do you think about uh, Hillary getting knocked out as far as the vice presidential candidate? And um, uh, what do you think about... Um, Joe Biden. Like, well, what do you I, think about I, that whole thing? I think Hillary Clinton should not have been the candidate. Uh, she comes with a lot of baggage, and her husband is a big part of the baggage. Uh, by the same token, uh, Joe Biden is the same old thing. I understand probably why they picked him, and that is because he has experience. Uh, he's been around a while. So for people who criticize Obama for not having experience, you can always go, yeah, but I got Joe Biden. Uh, but uh, Biden has his own baggage. The guy had a plagiarism scandal several years ago and a long track record that he they can nitpick on all the conservative radio programs and everything. So I think they would have been better off with somebody maybe with a little less of a track record. Somebody who isn't the same old thing. Exactly. Yeah, I, I kind of agree there. I thought uh, Obama could have done a better job picking his, his vice presidential candidate. Uh, running mate, rather. And but I do think it was more important to not pick Hillary Clinton exactly. than it was to uh, whether or not he picked Joe Biden. Oh, definitely. I totally agree there. Um, again, the baggage is issue, uh, you have a very good point. Uh, Bill Clinton brings a lot of baggage with him. <laughs> but, That's right. But, uh, hey, thanks so much, Tom. Uh, can, you, can you take me out uh, uh, Jamaican style? Jamaican style? I guess that would be like a bong hit, wouldn't it? <coughs> Charles on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, what's going on with you, Tom? Not much, Charles. Hey. How are you? Oh, man, first-time listener, man. You're a revelation, bro. You Thank know you. what I'm saying? Hey, just started listening to you like a month ago. One of my friends put me on to you, and I was dealing with this crazy broad, you know, for a cool little minute. And I'm wondering, I'm a nice guy, and I'm wondering why I'm sitting up here dealing with this BS with her. And, you know, she cheated on me with with uh with the guy that stays right down the street from her. So I started doing it to her friends, you know, everyone that I can get. And now I think, you know, she found out, but we still, you know, like mess around. And now, you know, her mother passed. I'm tired of the nagging. I'm saying her mother passed like two weeks ago, and she's still not in the ground. And, uh, man, I decided to leave her. So I just bounced on her. 
Now she's calling me, blowing my phone up, telling me I'll never see my son again. I'm like, cool, I already paid child support. So, <laughs> I mean, why would you want to get further involved than you are? Huh? Why would you want to get further involved with her than you are? Oh, man, You're... I just ended it all. You know what I'm saying? I had to sit up here. I was going through a little confusing time myself, you know. But I'd rather do bad by myself than sit up here and listen to a broad nag, and she's not bringing nothing to the table. Absolutely. Well, she's probably bringing dinner to the table for herself. No, she's not even doing that. She can't cook, Tom. Oh, my God. Really? She not cook, Tom. She made some chicken for me and my boy, and dang, her killed us. Oh. And what black woman do you know that can't cook chicken? <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of women who won't cook chicken. I can tell you that. Yeah, you know. But, you know, that's one of my favorite meals. And, you know, the chicken was still gummy. Oh, and I'm like, hey, my. I'd rather be by the a way, by, by the way, i got to tell you something. I made barbecue chicken last night. I'd blow you away. If you don't have any dinner, come on over. I made, I went to Costco and got like 50 chicken thighs, those Foster Farms chicken thighs. And I got some of that Stubbs barbecue sauce and I slow roasted those babies. I'm still uh, eating chicken. Oh. Oh, yeah. Leftover chicken is the business. The uh, best. Fresh. Hey, but see now, a leftover broad is not. <laughs> And she's cramping my style, so, you know, hey, it didn't take me long to hop back in the swing of things. I got a little honey coming over in a second, and it's not going to cost me a thing. I love that. You know, not a dang thing. I'm going to sit up here and twist me a doobie and sit back and just, you know, laugh at him. <laughs> sounds, like you, sounds like you're getting more ass than a toilet seat, Charles. Oh, oh, yeah, that's the business. And, you know, when I go out, hey, I got a new thing that I've been trying, too, to have females buy me a drink. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That works sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? The drinks cost a lot in clubs. Fourteen. Right. And I get like double shot to Hennessy, so that's like twenty five dollars for one shot for me. Yes. You know? you know, and hey, I can't afford to buy nobody else no drink, even though I do make a good living. They still <laughs> want their hands out and then dance the crease out your pants and they don't want to try to give you none. But they want you to shovel them drinks all night. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Hey, man, hey. I didn't, man, I guess a while ago, you know, I, I kind of fell into a little sucker stage, man. I just, you know, but listening to you, it brought me up out of that. I'm like, hey, I'll bounce, you know, hey, do what you're going to do. I'm going to do me. And there's plenty of women hitting on me. I and totally I love them. it. Oh, yeah, try to get me to move in and tell me to move all my clothes up out of my house to her house. And I'm like, man, you're crazy. You might cut my stuff up, bleach it, whatever, you know. And then she has that power where she could tell you, get out. This is my house. So, you know, I'm like, man, hey, I'd rather not deal with it. I'm cool. She can see the, you know, keep the sun. I'll see him when I see him. But that used to be her little threat right there. You'll never see your son. He'll have a new father. I'm like, good, go find him one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I think, I, well, you got it under control, Charles. I love it. Thanks a lot for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Ernest on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Ernest. Tom, I know you're an atheist, but I got to say there is a God. You are my God of the airwaves, buddy. I love that. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I was thinking about a topic you did um, uh, last week about personal lives in the workplace. Yeah. And I see it, you know, I mean, it, it really kind of annoys me after a while because I work, I work in eight hours, I dedicate, and I take my lunch and breaks at the scheduled time. But then there are some people who, you know, they're on the Internet, they stand in the middle of the room talking all the time, and, and you know, and it's just like they're getting paid, but they're not working. How wow. dare they do that? That's right. I know, and I, I can see why all these jobs are getting shipped over to, like, India and China. You know, I mean, it, it, my field is a competitive field, and more and more manufacturing jobs are being shipped out. And uh, I can see why, because American people just don't want to work. Oh, boy. But you're still working, right, Ernest? Actually, I'm, uh, I'm going to be leaving to uh, go to school, but... Because I'm trying to better myself, you know. Uh, one of your topics that was called "You You Get What You Deserve," yeah. uh, it really inspired me to get my get my A word in gear and just you know get the piece of paper, finish up. I'm proud of you, Ernest. I am proud of you. Calling from Livingston, New Jersey. 
Yeah, I've been listening for two years now. Every day, I take what you say to heart, man. I appreciate what you do. I'm here for you, Ernest. Keep us informed. And uh, could you take me out, uh, Michael Vick style? Absolutely. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Here's Ryan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Ryan. Hey, I would like to ask you if uh, Barack Obama loses uh, the election this November, is he going to still run next presidential election? Uh, who can tell? I mean, the guy's only uh, been elected to office one time, and that was uh, as U.S. senator. He has no previous experience uh, as a politician. And you have to wonder if he loses an election, how interested he'll be in continuing. Yeah, you're right. So what do you, so you think, uh, he has a better chance now since, uh, McCain pick, uh, woman BP? No. Uh, you mean, do, do I think Obama has a better chance since McCain picked the woman? Well, I, I, I certainly don't think it's going to help McCain at all. I think it's going to hurt McCain. I think they are wrong, uh, just picking a chick. Picking a chick. <laughs> hey, they got the black guy. We'll have the chick. <laughs> you're absolutely right, man. Hey, man, you're the man, and uh, we miss you here in Seattle. And uh, can you take me out uh, or uh, DTV, your horse, DTV? I wish I had more time, Ryan, but I'm out of time for this hour. The Tom Likas Show.